Hello, I'm Dev Poodle. As I'm writing this, a new version of Godot released just a couple weeks ago, Godot 4.4. This is one of my favorite updates to Godot I've seen in a while, so today I'll be going over the features I've enjoyed the most and explain how you can use them in your own projects. The first feature I want to talk about is interactive in-game editing. Many other major engines have had this for a while, making it one of the most community requested features for Godot. Well, it's finally here. When running a game from the editor, you'll now see this menu attached to the top of your window. From this menu, you can override the camera to fly around the scene, and you can select objects to move them around. You also have some really nice options, like pausing the whole scene and moving ahead by individual frames at a time, which makes it much easier to debug issues that may only appear for a handful of frames. If you check this box in the menu, you can even have the game embedded within the editor window, which can be incredibly convenient depending on your workflow. Next feature I want to talk about is also related to 3D editor workflow. That's a new preview for camera 3Ds. Before, if you wanted to see through a camera in your scene, you had two choices. Either you could run the game and see what it looks like, or you had to press this preview button when selecting the camera, locking the entire 3D viewport onto the camera's position and angle. Because it locked the viewport completely, it meant the only way you could move the camera in this mode was by manually adjusting the numbers in the inspector, which obviously was very annoying. Godot 4.4's new camera preview appears in the inspector by default, allowing you to move the camera around freely in the editor without being restricted. This is a fairly small addition, but compared to the previous way you had to do it, it feels like a massive improvement. The next thing I want to go over is the ability to use typed dictionaries. In case you don't know, GDScript allows you to use static type hints for all of your variables. This generally comes with a slight boost to performance, and more importantly, makes your code much cleaner. Until Godot 4.4, there was one obvious exception to static typing, and that's dictionaries. A dictionary could take or return any type of object at all when you accessed it, making it much harder to integrate it with otherwise statically typed code. 4.4 fixed this by allowing you to statically type both the inputs and outputs of dictionaries. You use this notation, where you have the brackets surrounding the desired input type, and then the desired output type. This is similar to the notation for typed arrays. Another script-related feature that's been added is the at export tool button annotation. Before this feature, if you wanted to put a button in the inspector for one of your nodes, there wasn't really a great way to do it. You could export a boolean with the setter that calls your function. This was the method I personally used. I even made a plugin that would make it look like a button in the inspector. But this always felt like a workaround, and many people wanted an official solution. This is where the new annotation comes in. If you write at export tool button, then create a variable storing the method you want to call, it will automatically appear as a button in the inspector and call the said function when clicked. Of course, this only works on tool scripts. Now for one of my personal favorite features of this update, the new GD script tool tips. Before, when you moused over something in Godot's script editor, nothing happened. If you wanted to see the documentation for something, you had to control click it, which many developers didn't even know about and it opened a tab in the script section, which you now had to close when you're done. In 4.4 though, whenever you even just hover over something, like a variable or function in the script editor, it automatically shows the official documentation for it. It's really hard to overstate how useful this is. I constantly find myself wanting to see what exactly a function does, what its parameters correspond to, and what its output will mean. This makes finding that information basically effortless. All right, I've went over three script-related improvements in a row, and while I think that's where the subject shines the most, there's still other improvements to talk about. One of my favorite is the overhaul to the grid map UI. There's a couple aspects to this. First, it moves the grid map toolbar to the bottom of the editor. This makes it more consistent with everything else in the engine, including the tile map editor, and it allows you to see many more tiles at once. The other thing this update did is redo the tools you use to edit the grid map. While there's no new major tools, the key bindings and the way you interact with tiles has been changed to be much more intuitive and faster to edit. I was using a grid map for level design in one of my personal projects, and the updates to it felt like such an immediate improvement that I almost forgot what it was like before. I've always felt like grid map was a very underdeveloped feature in Godot, so I'm glad to see some real changes being made to it. The last thing I want to go over is performance gains. This update saw a ton of pull requests just about improving the performance of the engine and editor. The scene tree, for instance, had major changes made internally, so you can edit it much faster than before. There used to be a very noticeable lag when moving or renaming loads, and that's basically just gone now. They also added a new texture importer, Previously, loading in even just a single 4K image could take up to 30 seconds. Now it takes less than half a second. Goodness, I haven't even mentioned 2D batching yet. With the move to Vulkan, Godot lost 2D batching in the main renderer. They re-implemented this in 4.4, making 2D scenes with large amounts of text and reused textures quite a bit faster. Overall, it just feels like every part of the editor has been massively sped up. This update improved the editor experience so much that it practically feels like a different engine at times. So, I hope I have shown you some features that interest you and how to use them. Of course, I'll link to the blog going over all of the major changes in this update is linked in the description. If there are any features you think I missed, feel free to mention them in the comments. And if you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. I'm Dev Poodle.
Thank you so much for watching this, and goodbye. <laughs>